Now I, I tell you something about the main components of the rover. This was an all-metal constructed flexible wheel. Since the temperatures on the moon varied from minus 250F at night to plus 250F during the day, rubber or plastic material could not be used. So we had to design an all-metal wheel, which however was flexible, such as a soft pneumatic tire, to, to provide the astronauts a smooth ride, as well as provide a large enough footprint so it doesn't sink deep into the soil. To accomplish this, we came up with a, a woven wire mesh type of a wheel, woven out of spring, high strength spring material, formed into a total shape and attached to the aluminum hub and rim. Now, the surface of the, the, the wheel, the tire, was equipped with uh, titanium strips covering about 50% of the surface area, which provided excellent flotation as well as traction capability. It was kind of a self-cleaning type of wheel if s s small particles got inside through the mesh, they went out as well, and they did not have any problem of accumulating dirt inside the wheel. Now, the, the load on the moon was only 67 pounds per wheel. So the flexibility of the tire had to be designed to such a low load. However, the inertia forces on the moon are the same as anywhere else in the world. So running the vehicle at 10 miles an hour and impacting a rock, there were high forces up to 600 pound force developed, which had to be taken by this soft tire. So for this purpose, we included uh, an inner tire made out of titanium spring loops, which could take the 600 pound impact force. Uh, this saw the suspension system. It was a, a double arm, wishbone type suspension, similar to the one used in racing cars. And the, the spring which we, which we used was a torsion spring. Uh, which is shown at the lower attachment of the arm. Uh, we also had to provide a shock absorber or a hydraulic damper and use the silicone oil to be able to take the low end as well as the high temperatures. Now, optimizing the suspension was very important because in the low gravity environment, the vehicle would have bounced tremendously, and we had to provide a decent ride for the astronauts as well. So we conducted a lot of computer simulation on the suspension design before arriving at this configuration. Now inside the wheels, every four wheels, there was an electric motor driving to a gear reducer which provided the traction capability for the vehicle. Uh, this is the wheel drive system, consisted of an electric motor, uh, which was driving through a gear reducer, and the output was attached to the wheel hub. A brake system was also incorporated in each of the four wheel drives. Now a total of one horsepower was adequate to drive this vehicle under moon gravity up to 10 miles an hour. And the electric motor provided high torque to climb up to 25 degree slopes. Uh, the control of the vehicle 
was located in the center of the vehicle between the two astronauts, so both of them were capable of driving it. Of course, the commander never gave up this function to the other guy. Uh, the controller was a single arm joystick type controller with a T shape as shown on this, uh, this slide. And the design was arrived at in consultation with the astronauts so that they could rest their arm with their inflated bulky gloves on top of the controller and provide the movement for the joystick. Pushing it forward accelerated the vehicle, tilting it left and right provided the steering motion, and pulling it back applied the brakes. Uh, in the display console, which is, was in front of the controller, we had all the switches, circuit breakers, temperature indicators, uh, and uh, in addition, a navigation system output, which was uh, located on the upper left side. And this provided a odometer reading, how much they traveled, a speedometer like you have in your car, but it also provided a navigation system, which, which has taken the information from the odometer as far as distance is concerned, and had an inertial guidance type navigation with gyroscope to determine the direction. So they know at every point where they have to go back, which direction, and how far they are from the lunar lander. Since the moon has a much smaller curvature than the Earth, they soon went out of direct sight of the landing unit, and they needed this navigation system to find their way back. Since they traveled in one sortie as long as 15 miles. In addition to building uh, four final units, three of them were sent to the moon, and the number four as a backup vehicle is at the Smithsonian Inst uh, Institute in Washington, D.C. So in addition to those four final vehicles, we built about eight different test vehicles to test the mobility, the thermal vacuum capability, vibration resistance, endurance, deployment, and other functions. This one here shows a mobility test, our test vehicle, which we tested on the Pismo Beach sand dune area in conjunction with astronauts. Uh, here with us were Jerry Carr, one of the astronauts, and Jack Lozma, who were working with us throughout the program, design, development, testing, and they participated in this mobility evaluation. Uh, the qualification of the vehicle was conducted in a thermal vacuum chamber on one quarter of the vehicle. Since, since all four wheels, its suspension and drives were identical, it was enough to qualify it on one system.